I'm Toyd, and I'm a speaker designer, but today I'm not designing speakers. Instead, I'm going to be looking at the Dayton Audio M6 powered bookshelf speakers from the unique perspective of a speaker designer. The Dayton Audio M6 are powered bookshelf speakers with an amplifier on the back of one of those speakers. If we were to take a look at the amplifier, we will notice that Dayton Audio did something very smart. They implemented a switch that allows you to switch the speaker between the left and right speaker, giving you more flexibility in the final placement. If we continue looking around the back, we will see they included a USB DAC as well as an RCA input. And even though we don't see it, there is also a Bluetooth input. It is notable that they have included an RCA subwoofer out. Since this is an RCA output, you would need to hook this up to a powered subwoofer. This does not have a crossover point on it, meaning that you would use the amplifier on the subwoofer for that crossover and that the speakers would be playing full range. The M6 did come with a remote control to make some basic adjustments. They also included a USB-C cable for the DAC as well as some premium speaker cabling with banana plugs. Now, whenever I get a set of speakers in, I want to really take a look at the design of the speaker. In this case, there's some really unique and smart decisions that Dayton chose to implement and a few that are head scratchers. Anyone that has watched this channel may recognize this woofer. This is the Dayton Audio Signature Line Series. I looked at this in depth, and in that video, we talked about how the frame had some unique acoustical benefits. This frame is a truncated version of that frame, yet it still keeps the same acoustical benefits. It is interesting that they chose a truncated frame because those are typically designed for use in an MTM speaker. This design has a mid-range on either side with the tweeter in the middle. And this is done to get the center to center spacing between the two mid-ranges and the tweeter closer together. Now this has some major acoustical benefits for an MTM design, but Dayton Audio could have used the same frame that they used on the signature line, but they chose to spend a little bit more money for this truncated frame. And honestly, from a design perspective, I love it. It allows Dayton Audio to make the speaker narrower. And although it doesn't have any major acoustical benefits, the narrower baffle does make these easier to place near field. Now that's important because after testing these, that is exactly where I think these speakers belong. Now, if we continue to look at the design, there is a silk dome tweeter and all of these drivers are hooked up with premium Allen head screws, which is something that adds minimal cost, but does help give it the premium feel that other speakers lack in this price range. And that's not the only place where we're seeing this premium feel. If we take a look at the back, they're using upgraded binding posts and even the speaker wire that came with it is upgraded with TechFlex and banana plugs. This is a hybrid speaker, meaning it uses both a passive crossover with the help of DSP. Because of that, I did take the woofer out to look at the crossover. When I took the woofer out, I was surprised to see that there was some acoustic fill in there to help reduce resonances. Even the cabinet itself is actually rather solid. These are things you don't typically see in bookshelf speakers at this price range, let alone powered bookshelf speakers. Of course, none of this matters if they don't sound good, which means we need to talk about the frequency response. Now, if we take a look at the frequency response, we're going to notice that the frequency response is relatively linear, except for that low end. The low end does have a bit of a boost in the mid bass. Now, this is really surprising because these signature woofers that they're using really aren't known for their bass. In fact, they're not a driver that you would typically choose in a design for bass. Yet when listening to these, the bass is tight and refined, something that I just didn't expect. The bass was unobtrusive and it never lost control of the woofer. And if you really like bass, you can hit that bass boost button on your remote control. This will increase your bass even more, taking your typical F3 of around 60 hertz to an F3 of 46 hertz. Now this is incredible for a speaker of this size, but it does come at a cost. You'll notice that when the bass boost is active, the entire bass region has gone up. When you're playing things like video games, techno music, or even pop, this can be a lot of fun. It gives those explosions the deep bass that is really enjoyable. And even with the bass boost, the bass stays tight and intelligible. However, if you were to put this on a YouTube video with male voices in it, you're going to notice that you're getting too much bass. 
and too much mid bass in the vocal range. And because of this, the speaker becomes less intelligible. In fact, those male voices sound muddy. And because of this, I'm not a huge fan of using the bass boost. Dayton Audio did something else really smart with the DSP. No matter how loud I listen to these, they would not distort. I talked to Dayton's engineers, and they did tell me there is a limiter on these speakers. That means that you can turn these all the way up, and you're not going to have to worry about damaging the speakers. And they will sound very good, no matter what the volume is. However, there are some drawbacks to that as well. They can only get so loud, and they can lose dynamics when played at full volume. This just reinforces the idea of these being near field monitors. And when these are near field at your desk, you should not need to worry about either of those things happening. However, if you remember the frequency response, it was relatively flat. And equivocally, this is good. But that is because we assume that when you sit at your listening seat, the highs will interact with the room and will be tilting down. Near field, they won't have that same interaction. Now, this can make the high end a little bit bright. Now, I found this to be the case, especially with women's vocals. Thankfully, the crossover region on these are in phase, meaning I can easily turn these speakers a little, say about 15 to 20 degrees off axis, and it really tones down that high end to very enjoyable levels. I've mainly talked about positive things about these speakers, but there are some things that are head scratchers. Uh, since these should be considered near field monitors, it would be nice to see a headphone jack in the front. I am also somewhat disappointed in their implementation of the DSP. Not sound quality wise, I mean, they sound fantastic at this price point. But the only DSP option they give you is bass boost. And the only way to turn that on or off is with the remote control. There's also no indicator on whether that bass boost is on or off. You just have to be able to use your ears and hear the difference. And although it is noticeable, it is something that I would like to be able to easily visually tell if that was on. I am also surprised that they didn't offer more DSP options, such as an increase or decrease in the treble and bass, or offer a couple preset EQs. Although none of this breaks the bank for a speaker at this price point, it is something that I think would have set these even further ahead of the competition. Dayton Audio has been really good to provide me a pair of these speakers for review, but they've also been very good to you. If you want to buy a set of these speakers, they gave me a special discount link and code that can be found in the description of the video. If you click on that link and enter the code, you can get the best deal on these speakers. Now that is a special discount that you will only find here. So if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button. This is Toyd. And I'm out.